Friends, I have to tell you, all of this stuff about plans and changes and unexpected plans and changes, this whole topic has become incredibly important to me, especially the last several months, for the reasons that I'm about to tell you. And honestly, I I have struggled with how to tell you. I wish I could sit down with everybody and explain in great detail what I'm about to share with you, but I think the only way I can share it is just by sharing it and then trying to debrief a little bit of it and explain it to you. I need to tell you today, as a group of people that I love very, very much, that after much prayer and much consultation, I believe that the Lord is calling me to allow my name to be placed on a ballot for the leadership position of district superintendent of the North Central District of Missionary Churches. Now, for some of you that are fairly new, you might not even know what in the world is that all about. Well, we belong to a small denomination. It's not large by other means, but we have different regions in the country, and we particularly are in the North Central District of the Missionary Church. We have... 64 churches, and I think there's 200 plus pastors, some of which are retired, some of which are active. And the district superintendent is responsible for helping meet needs in that district to give leadership to other pastors, to be a pastor's pastor. And what I've agreed to allow my name to stand is for that particular position. You need to be aware that there's been some deadlines that I've had to make and And the election itself is going to be held on February the 20th. That's a little bit more than a month and a half away. If elected, however, I need you to understand that I will end 27 years of pastoral leadership here at St. Mark sometime in June of this coming year. The transition actually happens July 1, which means there's about five or six months left of my potential tenure here at St. Mark. Now what I need you to understand is that this has never been my personal plan. I have struggled with this. And I can believe that I can honestly even say to you that I've resisted this calling up until virtually the last moment that a decision could be made. I've always had a passion in my heart to see churches grow and fulfill their purposes. I've always had a passion for us as well to fulfill the great commandments and the great commission. But I've had deep concerns for local churches and for pastors' well-being, for their spiritual health and their effectiveness that I haven't been able to shake. I always attempted to help in different ways that I could. And recently, In the last number of months, I've had multiple pastors come to me encouraging me to consider accepting the possibility of becoming the district superintendent for the North Central District. Many factors, you need to realize, played into me consistently telling them no in the past. Again, this hasn't been an easy decision. Early on, when they began the process of searching for a potential next DS, The debt that we had as a congregation still wasn't paid. And I I sort of thought, no, I I don't want to do it because I have a responsibility. I want to see this thing to the end. Another reason was my health. I would always tell guys, you know what? I I don't know what my health's going to be like. Others, I would say, it's my age. I I wouldn't be able to serve for, for more than one term if I was even willing to do that. I have a desire, and and I've made this known to the church board a while back, to to retire in in two years. It was sort of my plan. I had the recent pandemic that I would tell people, you know what, I I just don't think it's a good time. I mean, things are in chaos right now, everywhere. And there was always a general hope in my, my life that someone else was going to feel a call and be able to communicate that clearly. I've had sleepless nights. I've had burdens that would not go away. I've had multiple people who would come and continue to come even after I said no. To say, would you please consider? Well, gradually, I want to tell you what, what's happened. I began to sense that some of my personal hurdles were being removed one at a time. We paid off our debt a little earlier than what I anticipated. 
my latest health evaluation down in Indianapolis was that I didn't have to return to my surgeon, my doctor, for two years out. I didn't even need any more screenings until then unless I noticed something different. It was a major milestone that I met at the end of October. I began to look at our staff, and I recognized we have an incredibly strong staff here at St. Mark. And if there was ever a time that I felt like I could step away and still the church have great leadership in place, it's probably now. And then I looked at the strength of our congregation, and I recognized how strong you are. The real clincher came for me when my wife and I went to Sight and Sounds the end of October, November, I'm not sure when we went, but playing at Sight and Sounds Theater in Pennsylvania, Lancaster area, was the, um, the theatrical presentation of Esther. And I sat there through that thing and I watched and I listened to Mordecai express his fears and express his concerns and say, Lord, this isn't what I had planned. But he surrendered and submitted. Esther, the same thing. Lord, this isn't what I want. This is not what I'm seeking out. But if your sovereignty is in this, then so be it. I never want to be in a position as a Christ follower where I refuse to follow what I believe is the Lord's leading and so I began to pray really, really hard. And it slowly became clearer and clearer that this was a calling from God. That the Lord was literally pulling me towards this until I was willing to go to the nominating committee of which I was a part prior to and say, okay, guys, if you still are interested in me, I'm willing to talk with you. I removed myself from the nominating committee because there were others they were considering as well. But this was personal for me. And so I went through an interview with the district nominating committee with them understanding that just because I was being interviewed did not mean I was going to automatically accept a nomination should they come with one. But after that meeting, all these things that I've already described for you was continuing to unfold in my life until I was willing to tell them when they did come and say, John, we'd like you to let your name stand as a nominee, that I said yes. Now that set in motion a real whirlwind of things that you again need to know happened. The missionary church president needs to check off the nominee. So Steve Jones and I had a personal conversation, 45 minutes long one night, shortly after the nominating committee sent him my name. But two denominational boards at headquarters, Fort Wayne, Indiana, the GOC and the MLC, also had to give approval of my name. That was approved. It then came back to the nominating committee, and the nominating committee presents it to our district governance board. The governance board are the ones who actually set the ballot themselves, and that ballot, to my understanding, could go out to other churches as early as this coming week. And that's why there's been a timeline of events. If the Lord's really leading in this, I need to share with you. Now, for full disclosure's sake, this was not my plan, but I am told that my name will be the only name on the ballot in February. So the Lord willing with a favorable ratification vote from our conference, I will become the next district superintendent, the Lord willing. I thank you for your support, I really do. I was hoping you wouldn't cheer that I was leaving. <laughs> Here's the good news from my perspective. I will continue to call St. Mark home. You are always going to be family to me. I don't have to leave when I retire. I don't have to go find a different home church. I will be able to be here occasionally, and I hope to participate in special events. But I will be taking on a different leadership role in the Lord's work. So the Lord willing, 
my prayer is that at the appropriate time in the month of June, that you would release me with your blessing to fulfill that new assignment that I feel God is calling me to. Now, I'm sure that you're wondering, and we're going to be able to talk about this more in the days ahead, where does that leave you as a congregation? There's a process of transition. I'm going to invite Jeff Clay, our church board chairman, to come out and share with you briefly about that process and what happens next. So I've thought about this Sunday for a while now, and it's, it's finally here, and John has had to make his announcement, and I do apologize for the timing because it's right after Christmas. But like John said, he wanted to tell you first, and he didn't want to hear it from someone else. I think all of us would be, um, will go through a process of feeling grieving, sadness, maybe some anger, but then also joy as we see John moving into another realm of his ministry. And so we're excited for him, but we also need to, you know, we love our church and we love our pastor and we really love what's going on here. So in, in order to help some of you who have maybe been through a transition process in the past that wasn't so positive, or also just to give you information, I want to give you four specific things that you can take with you. This will help you kind of process through what's going to happen here at the church. The first one is when John told us years ago that he has planned to retire at a certain age, we knew that that summer was two summers from this coming summer. So we established a transition team this past summer and fall to handle this process. So we do have a team. We have been discussing what happens with St. Mark as we move forward. Um, that's point number one. We're going to have to change the timeline, obviously, because either we'll have someone ready in six months or we'll go through a different process. But we'll, we do have a team, and you need to be aware that we've been talking about it. Number two, the process is set for us in some ways. This process, we're going to do our best to be as transparent and as thorough as possible. Transparent means we're going to let you know as much as we can give you information as, we, as it comes to us. As thorough means that we won't be able to interview everybody or talk to everybody, ask every single one of you a question, but we'll do our best. We're going to be purposeful, but we aren't going to be rushed. We do have a timeline with John leaving July 1st. However, that doesn't mean we have to make that decision between then and now and then. If, it makes, if we make the decision, we can. If not, we'll do, an, we'll do it a different way. So we'll be purposeful but not rushed. Number three, we will provide you opportunities as a congregation for feedback. We'd like to hear what you have to say as a leadership team, as a church board. We want to know what the congregation thinks. We'll have chances for you to give feedback to us. In the process, um, we will also then start doing... Uh, prayer and fasting as a group. We hope to have many of you participate in this. This is really important to, all, to many of us. So if you have the opportunity to participate and you're so led, please do prayer and fasting. This team and an individual will agree that the individual has been called to our church. And that individual may be an internal candidate or an external candidate. Once that team feels the call and the or agrees with the call and the individual expresses that, I do believe I'm called to St. Mark, then that team will come to the church board and say, hey, this is the individual we feel is called to our church. When the church board agrees with that, if the church board agrees with that calling, then we will bring it to you as a congregation for a congregational vote. That does have to be done by members of the church. Um, if you want to have a discussion about membership, we can do that in the next couple of months. Inevitably, we will have an installation service where we put in our new senior pastor. If we have this done before John takes over, then Joe Wenger, who is our current district superintendent, will participate. If it's after John is the new district superintendent, he'll get to come back and help us install our new senior pastor. So number, number one is we have a team. Number two is we have a process. Number three, we have a strong desire to keep our current staff intact. Our pastoral staff, like John shared, is very strong. They're dynamic. They go through all the different uh, ages and phases, and we have a very strong team, just like he said. So we want to do our best to keep them intact, and our decision will weigh into that. And number four is actually next week, convenient timing, we have a congregational meeting after the second service. So after the second service will be done next week, if we're going to have a little bit more information for you, but we will have a time for you to ask questions. We don't know whether or not we'll be able to answer all your questions. We'll take notes. We'll find a way 
to get information to you. And as this process goes, we'll do our best to disseminate this information. So those are the four points. What I want to do this morning as we close out this service, which is the last service of 2020, is I want to pray for everyone. I want to pray for us. I want to pray for John. This has been a real tough time for him, decision-making John and Tammy together. I want to pray for you as a congregation as you go through this with us. And I want to ask you as a congregation to lift us up in prayer. Uh, myself and John Smorella are co-chairs of the transition team. And we have a group of people around us that we believe are, are wise and understanding and, and kind of know the church well. But if you would pray for us, we would, we would covet your prayers. Please do. I'd like to ask everyone to stand with me.